What's up Tube Tube? Welcome back to Leguido's Chop Shop, second best gel blaster channel on the tubes. And today we are going to be configuring the uh, Baron MOSFET. Uh, starting with the selector plate here, I'm going to have to apply one of these stickers um, here. And I'm also going to have to file this plate down a little bit. Um, just like tiny, tiny little bit here because it's um, very tight in the uh, in the MK box. I don't know why that is. Uh, very, very close tolerances, I guess. Just taking like the tiniest little bit off of that um, plate there and we'll just bring it in to see if it fits in nicely alright it's still quite tight so it's not actually just going to slide out by itself but it is not going to bind when you move the selector which is good, I, I like that, that's good uh, it's just a little bit, a little bit on the tight side but uh, now it's perfect alright, um, let's apply that sticker now, um, there are three different types of stickers here there's one which is solid white and one which has got a little black strip and one which has got a thick black strip and there's no right or wrong version it's just you use whatever works for your setup um, this particular uh, plate that I've got here has got injection molding marks here which is right where I'm going to have to put the sticker so I'm just going to rub that down a little bit as well just so that the sticker's got something smooth to uh, stick onto and uh, I, I'm, I don't know I'm just gonna go with the middle one because that seems like a good place to start they give you spares so uh, Hopefully, it doesn't go too wrong, but uh, if it does go wrong, you can still use some of the other ones. Uh, Alright, that seems to be working. Alright, cool. Go with that, see how that goes. Um, I don't know if I've got it in the right location this way or not. Um, we'll see how it goes. So I've just loaded this thing up into the uh, receiver here and according to the instructions and the cheat card here in order to go into configuration mode you need to switch this switch twice from semi to auto um, like this one, two and then it should beep and go into configuration mode this is not happening Similarly, to do the auto, you can go one, two, and it should beep and go into configuration mode. Again, not happening. I imagine this has probably got something to do with the location of the little white sticker or something that I that I put on there because I didn't really have any real good indications on where that's actually supposed to go, other than a picture in the in the manual, which just sort of gave a rough. Uh, location so I'm probably gonna have to uh, actually I'll tell you what I'm gonna do I'm going to slide this into safe and I'm going to make a mark on the um, selector plate where safe is and I'm gonna slide it to semi and I'll make a mark 
where semi is and I'll slide it to auto and I'll make it a mark where auto is and now that's going to at least give me an idea of uh, how where the plate should be when I'm calibrating uh, the thing without having to take it in and out of the receiver a hundred thousand times because I don't want to have to do that it's a bit of a pain um, so yeah I'll, I did quickly give it a test before I put it in the receiver and uh, it was working and beeping when you when you like cover the the sensors in here uh, if you tap them twice with your finger it would go into config mode so it's obviously something to do with the location of this sticker or something um, I'll open it up and have another look. Okay, so after a bit of uh, mucking around here, I found it's probably easiest to clamp this motor somewhere where it's not going to zip around and um, do the testing and configuration like this. Uh, I, I, as you saw before, I did mark the selector plate and I checked how much it was actually moving compared to where my marks were, and I found that uh, the actual selector switch here. Uh, does not move anywhere near as much as um, I had first programmed it to, I guess. Uh, when I first turned it on, you have to do like a configuration mode where where you sort of um, set it in semi and then hold the trigger down for a couple of seconds and set it in auto and then hold the trigger for a couple of seconds. And I guess that... Um, uh, calibrates it calibrates the uh, the optics on the MOSFET when I did that this was not in the receiver so uh, obviously I calibrated it wrong I had to recalibrate it for being in this receiver so now what I've got here I've set it into the uh, calibration mode so now what I do is I set it to semi Pull down the trigger till it beeps, set it to auto, pull down the trigger till it beeps, now that should be calibrated. I've done that now uh, <laughs> like this because pulling it apart, putting it together, pulling it apart, pulling it, it was just a lot of in and outs here and uh, I like to put things together uh, once if possible um, inevitably in a lot of cases it's going to be more than once uh, spe especially with this one because once I have uh, calibrated everything I'm going to have to pull it all apart again to put Loctite in um, the screws that hold the gearbox together because I have found these little M3 screws do like to work their way loose especially if you're going to be vibrating the hell out of them with a DSG um, so yeah, I'll, I'll give you a demo of what, what happens here when, when I uh, set it into config mode. Alright, so, one, two, and it beeps. That tells you you're in your configuration mode. If you go and get your cheat sheet, it shows you the numbers um, for each configuration. So you pull the trigger that many times, so it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, this is for active braking, eight is for pre-cocking, nine is for pre-cocking power, uh, ten is for battery protection, eleven is for bimodal, uh, twelve is for new thresholds, and um, thirteen and up, no change. So you work your way through the trigger, um, the menus until you get to the one that you want, and then you hold the trigger down um, for two seconds to enter the menu, and then it uses a series of beeps to uh, let you know uh, what level of whatever programming you're you're doing in there. So. I'm just going to, I mean, this particular setup for me is just going to be uh, semi-auto and some sort of burst, I guess. Uh, I'm not going to worry about any of the other crap except for active braking. Uh, I'll probably put active braking on because that's probably going to be a little bit necessary. Okay, so I was just testing the uh, settings and stuff on the MOSFET and... 
something happened. Uh, essentially, what it appeared to me was that the the uh, the nozzle was still moving, but um, I could see that the plunger inside the gearbox wasn't moving. And uh, <laughs> well, let's see. So I'm gonna open it up. I know what I know what has happened. Uh, I think it's quite uh, quite funny actually what is what has happened. Um, but I'll uh, I'll leave I'll leave it to when the box is open so you guys can see what is, what has actually happened here. Um, I may or may not. I'm pretty sure I mentioned at the start of this build that this was not. This was not a how-to video. This was merely you coming along the journey of uh, what it's like to build a DSG. And these are the sorts of things I guess you can hope to expect when you're building a DSG. I was kind of hoping that... Uh, well, I mean, I was kind of hoping that everything would run smoothly. But I was also kind of... Uh, I, I, want, I want realism. I don't want everyone to think that they can just go out there throw a couple of gears into uh, a gearbox and have everything work and it's all peachy that's not real life <laughs> what has actually happened here is quite funny um, I've I've seen I've, I've seen something similar happen before but never to this extent uh, <laughs> you've got to see it it's quite amusing, at least I think it is. Um, so, rip this build at the moment, but um, we will get more parts and continue in the future. Get a load. That's not where that gear's supposed to be. Rip. So, um, what I'm taking from this is that plunger, probably not the ideal plunger for a DSG build. Um, what I'm probably going to do is order a new plunger. Uh, I'll get I think, uh, um, I don't know, I'll try and find a stronger, a stronger plunger that's not going to uh, tear the gear out um, of the back of it. Uh, that was quite, uh, quite catastrophic. Um, I'm, I'm pretty impressed and kind of also a little bit upset, but uh, you know, these are the breaks. These are the things that happen <laughs> when you're doing this type of stuff. All right, um, rip for now. Uh, I guess you'll have to subscribe and uh, tune in to the next time when I continue this build. All right, peace.